Hello and welcome. My name is Juan Luis Polo. I'm an Associate Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. And in this video, we are going to present to you a public preview demo of Amazon Aurora PostgreSQL zero ETL integration with Amazon Redshift. This feature was announced during reInvent 2023 and is currently on public preview stage. One of the biggest challenges that customers face is the ingestion of multiple sources of data into their analytic systems. This spans across databases, data lakes, operational data streams for multiple sources, and also S3 buckets that store multiple file formats. Companies need to build and maintain manual data pipelines that requires data engineers for weeks or months to build them, and also maintenance can be very complex and costly. A common architecture that we see with customers is using Amazon Aurora as their operational database and Amazon Redshift as their analytic system. So in order to make it easy to replicate data from Amazon Aurora databases to Amazon Redshift, in reInvent 2023, AWS introduced the preview of Amazon Aurora PostgreSQL zero ETL integration to Amazon Redshift. This feature syncs transactional data from Amazon Aurora into Amazon Redshift with change data capture in near real time. You can replicate data from multiple Amazon Aurora database clusters into the same Amazon Redshift instance to derive holistic insights across several applications. This integration enables Amazon Aurora customers to run near real-time analytics and machine learning on petabytes of transactional data by offering a fully managed solution for making transactional data available in Amazon Redshift within seconds of being written into Amazon Aurora. This eliminates the need for customers to build and maintain complex ETL pipelines. The purpose of this video is to show a demo of how to set up this public preview zero ETL integration step by step and see how it's replicating data in near real time. During the demo, we are going to show you how to correctly set up the zero ETL integration, which is represented in this diagram. There are several prerequisites to fulfill in order to set up the zero ETL integration. First, configure the Aurora PostgreSQL source with a customized DB cluster parameter group. Second, configure the Amazon Redshift serverless destination with the required resource policy for its namespace. Third, update the Redshift serverless workgroup to enable case-sensitive identifiers. And finally, configure the required IAM permissions. There are two options for setting up all the prerequisites listed before. First, manually configuring all the source and target parameters. And the second option would be fix it for me option. This pops up when creating the zero ETL integration. We will see it later in the video. And this way, the AWS console will make all the necessary API calls under the hood for you. As a very important note, for this preview version of this integration, you must associate the cluster with the custom DB cluster parameter group while creating the cluster. You cannot perform this action after the source Aurora PostgreSQL database cluster is already created. This means that the Fix It For Me option will only work for the Redshift Data Warehouse target for this preview version of the integration. Let's get started with the demo. To set up the zero ETL integration, since it is in public preview, you must create an Aurora PostgreSQL database provision cluster within the Amazon RDA's database preview environment in the US East 2 Ohio region. In the AWS console, navigate to RDS and then scroll down and click on preview environment. First step to set up the zero ETL integration is to create a cluster parameter group. So on the Amazon RDA's preview console, left menu, click on parameter groups, then click on create new parameter group. Select PostgreSQL DB family Aurora PostgreSQL 15, the type DB cluster parameter group, another description and click create. Select the new parameter group and under actions, choose edit. Then set the following Aurora PostgreSQL cluster parameter settings. RDS logical replication to one, Aurora enhanced logical replication to one, Aurora logical replication backup to zero, and then Aurora logical replication global DB to zero. Enabling an enhanced logical replication automatically sets the replica identity parameter to full, which means that all column volumes are written to the write ahead log. After changing the parameters, click on save changes, 
and now is the turn to create the database. Choose databases in the navigation pane, then choose create database, and for engine options, choose Amazon Aurora. For edition, choose Amazon Aurora PostgreSQL compatible edition, and for available version, choose Aurora PostgreSQL compatible with PostgreSQL 15.4 and zero ETL support. For templates, select produc production, then enter a DB cluster identifier, under credential settings, set the master password, or you can also use the option to auto-generate the password for you. Under instance configuration, memory optimized classes has been chosen for this demo, selecting dbr6g 2x large instance type. Scroll down to additional configuration, and for db cluster parameter group, choose the parameter group that you created earlier. After that, scroll down and click on Create Database. In a few minutes, this should spin up an Aurora PostgreSQL cluster with one writer and one reader instance, with the status changing from Creating to Available. This Aurora PostgreSQL cluster that we just created will be the source from the Zero ETL integration. Next thing we need to do is to create a named database in the Aurora PostgreSQL cluster. When setting up PostgreSQL, you get three standard databases out of the box. Template 0, Template 1, and Postgres. The name database for the Zero ETL integration is required to be created using Template 1 and not Template 0, which is the default one when creating the named database in the cluster creation step. So, to create a new named database using the Create Database statement within the Aurora PostgreSQL cluster, we need to connect to the cluster right at endpoint and run the SQL commander. The following instructions from the AWS official documentation shows in detail how to create an EC2 instance in a public subnet within the same VPC as the Aurora Postgres cluster. This way, you can SSH the EC2 instance from your local machine and safely connect to the Aurora Postgres SQL cluster to create that name database that we need. Now, from a terminal or using AWS Cloud Shell, SSH into the PostgreSQL cluster and then run the following commands stated on the blog to install PSQL and then create the new database. Next step is to create the target data warehouse. We will be creating a data warehouse using Amazon Redshift Serverless in preview. Two requisites for that. You must create your target data warehouse in preview on the preview 2023 tag. And also you must create your target data warehouse in the US East Ohio AWS region. To create the warehouse, navigate to the Amazon Redshift console. On the left pane, select serverless dashboard and then select button create preview workgroup within the serverless dashboard. Set the name of the workgroup. You can also set the maximum capacity of the workgroup in increments of eight. For this case, we chose eight RPUs. Then you create a new namespace, you set the name of the new namespace. And finally, click Next, and in the Review and Create step, cl click on Create Workgroup. Once the workgroup and namespace are available, navigate to the namespace configuration and select the Resource Policy tab. Then choose Add Authorized Principle. You can enter the ARN of the AWS user or role or the ID of the AWS account that you want to grant access to the to create zero ETL integrations. Next, click on Add Authorized Integration Source. Specify the ARN of the Aurora PostgreSQL cluster as the authorized integration source, since it's the source of the zero ETL integration. Amazon Aurora PostgreSQL is case sensitive by default, and Amazon Redshift is case insensitive by default. In order to set up the zero ETL integration, we need to make our Redshift serverless workgroup case sensitive. We can modify the parameter using the AWS CLI. Since the Amazon Redshift console doesn't currently support modifying Redshift serverless parameters values. The command line to change the parameter value is provided in the AWS official documentation, as seen in the demo, and in this case I am using AWS Cloud Shell to modify the parameter. As a next step to create a zero ETL integration, your user or role must have attached an identity-based policy with the appropriate IAM permissions. 
The following sample policy from the AWS documentation allows the associated principal to perform the following actions. First, to create zero ETL integrations for the Aurora DB cluster, view and delete all the zero ETL integrations, and also create inbound integrations into the target data warehouse. You can go ahead and copy the provided sample policy. Let's create the policy in the AWS account. Navigate to the IAM console and on the left menu, click on policies. Next, click on create policy. We are going to modify the JSON code directly. And now you can paste the sample policy from the AWS documentation that we just copied. We have to modify the region, AWS account, Redshift endpoint and Aurora cluster endpoint from the sample. Important note from the AWS documentation, make sure you include the preview prefix in the RDS ARN and also note that the ARNs from Redshift provisioned and Redshift serverless and are different. Now click on next, set a name and a description for the policy. You may see errors related to the preview prefix that I mentioned before, but that's completely normal. And now you can attach this policy to any user or role that needs to have permissions to create Aurora PostgreSQL zero ETL integrations. As we mentioned at the beginning of this demo, for this preview version of the integration, you must associate the Aurora PostgreSQL cluster with the custom DB parameter group when creating the cluster. You cannot perform this action after the source DB cluster is already created. That's why we need all this manually configuration for the cluster parameter group for the source. However, the target data warehouse parameter could be fixed automatically by the AWS console. So first, let's see how this fix it for me option works. Navigate to the RDS previous console and select create zero ETL integration. Give the integration a name and click next. For the sources, select Browse RDS databases and select the Aurora Postgres cluster and also enter the name database that we previously created. Next, select the target Redshift data warehouse. I created a test target data warehouse that do not have the parameters fixed, just for the purpose of the demo. You will see this message that asks you to fix the resource policy and the case sensitivity parameter. So let's select Fix it for me. With the Fix it for me option, the AWS console will make all the necessary IPI calls under the hood for you, so you don't have to manually modify the target parameters. After reviewing all the configuration options, click on Create Zero ETL Integration. You will need to wait until the Redshift target is fully configured to actually create the integration. Now you can see that the integration is creating successfully and it'll take around 20 to 30 minutes for the integration to be active. Now that we have covered how the Fix It For Me works, let's create an integration using the original source cluster and target workgroup since we have worked on the requirements manually on the video. Navigate to the RDA's preview console and from the left menu click on zero ETL integrations. Select Create Zero ETL Integration. Give the integration a name and click Next. For the sources, select Browse RDS Databases and select the Aurora PostgreSQL cluster. Also enter the named database that we previously created. Next, select the target Redshift Data Warehouse. After review the configuration, click on Create Zero ETL Integration. It takes around 20 to 30 minutes for the integration to be active on your account. Now that the integration is active, let's create a database in Redshift and query the data replicated from the Aurora database. Navigate to the Query Editor v2 in Redshift and connect to the Redshift Serverless Workgroup. We are going to use the SVV integration system table to obtain the integration ID to create a database in Redshift where the data will be replicated from the Aurora DB cluster. Query the SVV integration table, get the integration ID, and use the create database command as shown in the video. If we navigate in the left menu, we can see that the database has been created as expected. Let's generate some data in the Aurora PostgreSQL database that can be replicated into the Redshift warehouse. Use your local terminal to connect to the Aurora PostgreSQL cluster, as we did before. 
using the following command create the table nation with the primary key nation key. Now let's enter some dummy data as shown in the video. Navigate back to the Redshift console and refresh the database in Redshift to see what happens. The table nation now is replicated and if we query the table, we can see that the data that we just entered in the Aurora PostgreSQL cluster is now in Redshift. The system table SVV integration activity displays details about completed integration runs that happens under the hood. As a final check that the replication happens in near real time, let's add a new value in our Aurora PostgreSQL nation table and query the table again in Redshift Query Editor v2. The new row is in Redshift seconds after inserting it in the source. This data replicated from Aurora can be used in queries that join tables from other Redshift databases too. Regarding monitoring the state of the zero ETL integration, there are several options to obtain metrics on the performance and status of the integration. Navigate to the Amazon Redshift console, select zero ETL integrations, and there you can choose the zero ETL integration you want to display Amazon CloudWatch metrics related to that integration. These metrics are also directly available on Amazon CloudWatch. For each integration, there are two tabs with information available, integration metrics with metrics such as the number of tables successfully replicated and lag details, and also table statistics with details about each table replicated from the Aurora PostgreSQL to Amazon Redshift. In addition to the Amazon CloudWatch metrics, you can query the following system views and tables, which provide information about the integrations. SVD integration, which displays details about the co configuration of the integrations. Sys integration activity, which displays details about completed integration runs. And finally, SVV integration table state, which displays details about table level integration information. This concludes our demo on zero ETL integration from Amazon Aurora PostgreSQL to Amazon Redshift in public preview. Hope you like this feature as much as we do, and thank you so much for watching.